Hello everyone, it's Alina. Welcome to my Soap General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. The character of Bobby Spencer was heartbreakingly stated to be leaving General Hospital this week in a two-part episode that concluded with a stunning twist. Nonetheless, poor Charles quickly returned to its regular routine. I think General Hospital will take home multiple daytime Emmys next year for Bobby's memorial. The speeches, flashbacks, and the surprising revelation that reporter Angela Brighton was actually BJ's guardian angel sent to Port Charles to remind everyone of the things that made Bobby special were all very well executed. The BJ twist was brilliantly executed. I was taken aback when she disappeared on Maxi. I realized then that she was an angel, and maybe even BJ. Several scenes in these two episodes made me cry, but my favorite was when BJ referred to Lucas as Champ before he disappeared. Originally, I believe the actor might have been one of Jacqueline Zeman's offspring, considering how much she looks like her, and especially with the lines they gave her about having a close bond with her own mother, plus Felicia complimenting on her kind eyes. Everything clicked into place when she revealed herself to be BJ. The episodes also made me realize how much Lucas is missed, and with Bobby gone, it would be fantastic to have him back on the canvas. Great work on the episodes leading up to the memorial too, especially the ones when Liz, Sunny, and Carly met at Kelly's. And of course, renaming the diner Bobby's was a terrific way to close and give Bobby a lasting presence on the program. To be fair, Carly and Felicia had to board the Millennium Falcon at Port Charles, make their way to Amsterdam, cross into Canada, and then return to Port Charles. Plus, the whole human trafficking plot and freeing Cornelia felt a touch rushed. They saved this girl in no time flat with no threat to them. I did however appreciate their chat about why Felicia never really bothered to spend out with Carly, and it led back to Carly's coming to Port Charles and destroying Bobby's life back then. Felicia, winner of the longest grudge waged in Port Charles, but it also reminded me about what I said in my column last week, Carly declaring Nana virtually incapable to change and shouting that she'll never forgive her, and then we have two episodes of Carly focused on how Bobby forgave her for her own wrongdoings and changed her from the schemer she was. Carly and Nina really aren't that different on some levels if you think about it. Oh, and Carly not understanding the difference between a deer and a moose? Hilarious. Dark Sunny is back and more dangerous than ever. Not content with only beating up Cyrus, he's now ordered Dex to kill him. Dex was absolutely on that this won't make Sunny's troubles go away, but obviously Sunny isn't thinking straight right now. I also can't picture Dex going through with the task, since he just doesn't have that cold-blooded murderer feel to him. Though Sonny was wise when he exploited the risk Cyrus brought to his family, especially Joss, to give Dex that push. My prediction is that Nima is going to convince Cyrus not to seek charges. Nicholas recently returned to Port Charles and it looks like he's saying farewell once again. Hopefully it won't be too long until we see him again, and his showing up to see Spencer at the end of Friday's program was a wonderful surprise. I am excited to see how that visit would go. Laura continuing to argue to Esma that turning herself up for breaking into Windermere will make her feel better was amusing, especially given we know Esmond has her memory back. Ava pressing charges and having her locked up was a surprise I didn't see coming. This should put a damper on Spencer flying to Paris with Trina though. And Esma messing up, giving Spencer her old nickname for him. Spence is undoubtedly going to make things interesting. With Spencer knowing she's back, I don't see her actually spending time, maybe just receiving community service. I still want to see Esme struggle more in balancing her two aspects, and not return to merely a truly terrible human. It's how Nell got penned into a corner and basically made unredeemable to the audience. I'm glad Willow isn't forgiving Michael so fast for his withholding the truth about Nina from her, but honestly, I think she'll cave and take him back before long. And when will we witness Carly's anger when she finds out Michael knew about Nima and didn't tell her? I was really expecting Felicia would have disclosed the truth about Cody, but it wasn't hard to assume that Sasha switched the samples when she followed her at the home and heart exhibit. Plus, revealing the truth wouldn't be the same without Mac on the show. Also, the lawsuit against the WSB for the destruction of the jewelry never transpired, 
So why is Cody making such a big deal about signing an affidavit that was never utilized in any legal proceedings? This storyline feels foolish and weak to me. It would be considerably more fascinating if they got back to whatever secret Cody and Dante had that goes back to when they were younger, which appears to have been ignored by the authors. So Curtis had his operation, next. Honestly, this is one storyline I have zero interest in, but at least it's not the servicey story. And finally there is Adam, next. Again, lil interest and zero point in having a tale built around an individual that has no ties to anyone in town. That's all I have for this week. Tell your comments and thoughts below and tell what you thought of the Bobby-centric episodes. We had better ensure that General Hospital has its defibrillator paddles charged. It's going to need him when Steve Burton makes his comeback as Jason Morgan in early 2024. Ahead of the Emmy winner's return, he applauded executive producer Frank Valentini for the way that he revealed the news of the fan favorite's on-screen resurrection during the soap's 60th anniversary special in primetime. He did an amazing job with this reveal of, one door closes, another one opens, because that's what I said in my Instagram video when I left, Burton stated during an interview with ABC's Chicago station. I believe that in my life, when one door closes, another door is gonna open. That's how I've lived my whole life, he added, and when I did get let go by General Hospital, I was able to go to Days of Our Lives for a little while as the long-gone character of Harris Michaels. That door closed and now this door has opened again. Though Burton has been so popping since the 1980s, he's excited, he said, to be heading back to the show on which he spent the most time. I mean, it's been a big part of my life. It's enabled me to achieve so many things in my life and opened so many more doors for myself and my family. It's been fantastic. So to return home, see my friends and family there, it's been amazing. The question remains how precisely will Jason manage to evade death yet again? Considering that he was the last victim of Peter August's reign of terror in 2021, that's gonna be no mean task. All I know is I'm buried in a cave in Greece somewhere, he claimed. That's all I know. Julian Jerome may have been a tormented character on General Hospital, but in real life, his former portrayer William DeVry is a sweet person with a love of hockey and animals, who never fails to offer his house to rescue canines, and those two passions collide more often than you might expect, especially for DeVry. The pups watch hockey with their pop whenever they have the chance. Just the other week, DeVry uploaded a snapshot of a bed full of pups on X slash Twitter all, supposedly waiting patiently and beautifully for their breakfast from dad. Of course the proud dog dad had to show them all off after noting a tongue-in-cheek name change for one of them while watching the Rams play. But seriously, what was for breakfast? Unfortunately, being a pet parent involves understanding that someday you'll have to say goodbye to the little bundles of fur and affection that have become a part of your family. And it's not necessarily something we expect or are prepared for. Because of he didn't go into details, DeVry lost one of his favorite pets, noting on Twitter only that he and wife Rebecca Staub definitely felt she'd be the last one standing. Very sad news to share, he stated in the initial tweet. Unexpectedly, Josie regrettably watched her last Canadian's Montreal game with me on Thursday. Only sharing cause you guys have been such a significant part of her rescue journey. Thanks to everybody who cherished her journey. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.